Sleep is crucial for biological function but often disturbed in critically ill patients. Lack of sleep in healthy adults negatively impacts multiple body systems and has both short-term and long-term negative effects. In the context of critical illness, poor sleep quality and quantity can lead to worsened outcomes such as increased delirium, depression, decreased quality of life, and possibly higher mortality rates. Sleep is an active and complex process, defined by reduced perceptual engagement with the environment. Normal sleep is classified into NREM, non-rapid eye movement, and REM, rapid eye movement, sleep based on polygraphic recordings. NREM sleep is further divided into three stages, N1, N2, and N3. Each stage represents increasing sleep depth. N2 features K-complexes and sleep spindles, which are thought to promote deeper sleep and memory consolidation. N3, also known as slow-wave sleep, is vital for physiologic restoration. REM sleep is associated with dreaming and is crucial for memory consolidation and learning. Typically, the brain cycles through these sleep phases in 90 to 120 minute intervals, with 4 to 5 cycles occurring during a full night's sleep. Both the architecture, quality, and the duration of sleep are important for its beneficial effects. Observational studies note that sleeping less than 7 or more than 9 hours per day over the long term is associated with adverse outcomes. Sleep disturbances are highly prevalent in ICU, with 47% to 59% of patients reporting poor sleep through questionnaires and 67% to 100% showing abnormal sleep quality through objective measures like polysomnography and actigraphy. Post-ICU discharge, 10% to 61% of patients continue to experience sleep disturbances. This improves over time but can persist in up to 61% of ICU survivors 6 to 12 months post-discharge. Long-term effects of sleep disturbance extend up to 3 years post-ICU discharge, with women more affected than men. Sleep disruptions are often linked with other adverse conditions such as post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, weakness, fatigue, and pain, although these relationships are likely bidirectional. Factors affecting sleep in ICU are Patient factors, increasing age, male sex, and poor sleep quality at home are linked to worse ICU sleep. Acute illness severity has inconclusive evidence regarding its impact on sleep. Distress, anxiety, and pain impair sleep, creating a feedback loop with sleep deprivation. Environmental factors, loss of diurnal variation and circadian entrainment affect sleep. Ambient light and its variations contribute to poor sleep. Noise levels often exceed WHO guidelines, causing sleep disturbances. Patient care related. Frequent nursing and medical interventions disrupt sleep. Average of 42.6 to 51 care interactions per night, 20% cause evident sleep disruption. Treatment related. Mode of mechanical ventilation affects sleep, but evidence is inconclusive. Non-invasive ventilation use also impacts sleep quality. Feeding and nutrition Continuous infusion of nutrition may disrupt circadian rhythm. Intermittent feeding has unproven benefits for sleep and circadian rhythm. Pharmacological factors sedatives like propofol have conflicting evidence regarding their impact. Benzodiazepines and opioids alter sleep architecture. Cardiovascular medications like adrenergic catecholamines suppress REM and slow-wave sleep. Antidepressants and antipsychotics variable effects on sleep. Tricyclics like amitriptyline decrease sleep latency. Miscellaneous corticosteroids cause neurocognitive, behavioral changes that may impact sleep. The impact of multiple pharmacological agents on sleep is not completely defined, especially in terms of sleep deficit-related morbidity. Objective measurement of sleep in the critically ill are polysomnography, PSG, Gold standard but limited in ICU due to logistical, technical, and financial barriers. Poor tolerance in up to 25% of ICU patients. Inaccurate for atypical sleep patterns seen in critically ill. EEG spectral analysis. Simplifies sleep analysis by using fewer EEG leads. By spectral index, BIS. Not reliable in differentiating sleep stages. Odds ratio product index and ICU depth of sleep index show promise but require further validation. Limited lead EEG. Simplified devices like Sedline TM and Sleep Profiler TM trialed. 
Poor agreement with PSG for stages N1 and N3. Actigraphy. Uses limb movements to estimate sleep-wake state. Overestimates total sleep time and sleep efficiency in ICU settings. Novel devices Nomori scan. Uses under-bed mattress sensor. Moderate agreement with PSG but poor specificity. Subjective sleep quality in ICU are self-reporting limited due to delirium and sedation. Only about 50% of ICU patients can participate. Questionnaires. 13 different types exist. 10 patient reported, 3 nurse reported. Varying levels of accuracy when filled out by nursing staff. Richards Campbell Sleep Questionnaire, RCSQ. Most rigorously studied for ICU. Measures 5 domains of sleep. Clinician completed RCSQ's accuracy varies. Translated and validated in multiple languages. Varen Snyder Halpern, VSH, Sleep Scale. More labor-intensive than RCSQ. Low association between patient and clinician reported sleep. Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index, PSQI. Numeric rating scale for sleep, NRS sleep. Simple scale of 0 to 10. Strongly correlated with mean RCSQ score. Sleep observation tool, SOT, observer assesses sleep every 15 or 30 minutes. Correctly identifies sleep 81.9% of the time compared to polysomnography. Effects of sleep deprivation in ICU. Neurological effects. Delirium in up to 80% of ventilated patients. Bidirectional relationship with sleep deprivation suggested. Increased risk of seizures with sleep deprivation in focal epilepsy. Impact in critical illness unquantified. Cognitive function. Sleep fragmentation linked to cognitive impairment in ICU survivors up to seven days post-discharge. Endocrine function, sleep disruption leads to imbalance in anabolic and catabolic hormones, contributing to muscle atrophy and critical illness weakness. Impaired glucagon secretion and elevated cortisol in sleep-deprived adults, possibly leading to impaired glucose tolerance in ICU. Melatonin, Reduced concentrations in ICU patients likely contribute to sleep disturbances and have been linked to increased morbidity and mortality in animal models. Immune function, sleep deprivation decreases natural killer cell activity and impairs vaccination response. Poor sleep linked to severe lymphopyenia and increased ICU admission need in COVID-19 patients. Respiratory function, impaired ventilatory responses to hypercapnia and hypoxemia during sleep deprivation. Sleep fragmentation increases risk of upper airway collapsibility, possibly leading to extubation failure. Psychological, bidirectional relationship between sleep deprivation and psychiatric disorders. ICU survivors frequently report anxiety and depression, with a high likelihood of sleep disturbance three months post-discharge. Sleep optimization in ICU, strategies and interventions, non-pharmacological management, intervention bundles, multidisciplinary, nurse-led bundles focus on eight domains like noise reduction, use of earplugs and eye masks, music, natural circadian rhythms, pain management, quiet time, nursing activities clustering, and mechanical ventilation optimization. Evidence is mixed. Studies with more interventions and inclusion of eye masks and earplugs show positive results. Looking now at individual components. Noise reduction. Includes policy steps like door closure, monitor alarm volume reduction, and limiting care activities between 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. Quiet time. Designates a 1-2 to two hour period in the day for reduced noise and light. Earplugs and eye masks. Offer low-cost, low-risk intervention for noise and light reduction. Combined use shows improved self-reported sleep, but earplugs alone do not offer substantial evidence for improvement. Music. Studies show varying results. No strong evidence supports music therapy as an effective sleep aid in the ICU. Massage. Provides conflicting results. One study reports improved self-reported sleep and actigraphy determined total sleep on the second and third days of 10-minute back massages. Acupressure. A study reported increased total sleep time and improved sleep quality, but measurement methods were not ICU-specific, questioning the validity. Next is pharmacological sleep aids in ICU settings. Melatonin. Meta-analysis shows uncertain effects on sleep quality and quantity. 
A clinical trial with 203 ICU patients found improvement in RCSQ score but not in nurse-observed total sleep time. ProMedic study including 841 patients showed no effect of melatonin on sleep. Melatonin receptor agonists. Remelteon trial involving 88 ICU patients resulted in fewer awakenings but no difference in mean sleep hours. Temazepam. No clinical data available. An ongoing trial is currently recruiting. Nocturnal Propofol. Various studies have inconsistent results. No convincing evidence that it improves sleep quality or quantity. Dexmedetomidin. Increases sleep efficiency, total sleep time, and percentage of N2 sleep phase in certain trials. Sleep quality as a secondary outcome did not show a significant difference. Orexin receptor antagonists. Suvorexant trial found a decrease in delirium incidence but no other significant improvements in sleep parameters. Take-home points. Sleep disturbances are common in ICU settings, causing physiological derangements and adverse outcomes. These disturbances are often exacerbated by the intensity of ICU care. Current measurement methods for sleep in ICU, including polysomnography, have logistical issues. Actigraphy and BIS are not sufficiently accurate for this setting. Validated subjective measures offer a patient-centered approach but need standardization for research comparison. Non-pharmacological interventions like earplugs and eye masks show some promise, but other strategies lack clear evidence of benefit. Pharmacological sleep aids are commonly used but lack robust evidence to support their effectiveness. Agents like melatonin, remelteon, temazepam, Propofol, and dexmedetomidin have shown mixed results in studies. Given the complexity of sleep, a multimodal approach is likely needed to manage sleep disturbances effectively in ICU patients.